hello and welcome students in this lecture we will discuss some numericals based on movement of inertia we will basically discuss two methods in first numerical we will discuss the movement of inertia about centroidal axis about horizontal centroidal axis as well as about vertical centroidal axis and in the second numerical we will discuss the movement of inertia about any other axis except centroidal axis so let us see in this numerical you can see we have to find ixx and iyy for the t section shown in the figure okay now what is t section in this t section first rectangle part 1 is horizontal like this and second rectangle part 2 is vertical like this the distance is shown over here the width of this bottom rectangle is 20 mm and vertical height of this rectangle is 60 mm y bar equal to 50 x bar equal to 30 actually x bar and y bar we will calculate it is given in the figure directly though it is remains to calculate in this numerical now this horizontal length is 60 mm for the upper rectangle and vertical height is 20 mm now as the section is symmetrical about y y axis we can say that x bar equal to 60 by 2 equal to 30 mm means total width by 2 equal to 30 mm this method we have already discussed in center of gravity now let us talk about part 1 for the part 1 this part area will be 60 by 20 so a1 equal to 60 into 20 1200 mm square now what is y1 actually must see for y1 you have to take a reference of bottom axis which is x axis now part 1 cg will be at the center from this center the vertical distance is 10 mm plus 60 mm so it will be 70 mm so 60 plus 10 equal to 70 mm so it is y1 this method is repeated as in cg part 2 part 2 vertical height 60 and horizontal width 20 so 60 into 20 area will be 1200 mm square now what is y2 for part 2 cg will be over here means at the center from the center up to the bottom it will be half of 60 means 30 mm now what is the formula of y1 it is as usual a1 y1 plus a2 y2 upon a1 plus a2 so by replacing the values in the formula you will get y bar is equal to 50 mm so hence we have calculated x bar is equal to 30 mm and y bar is equal to 50 mm but this is the first method first method means what we have to calculate as you can see in the question ixx and iyy must remember this when we have to find ixx and iyy then and then we will find cg means x bar and y bar but we will see in the second numerical that if the moment of inertia is asked about any other axis except ixx and iyy then we will not find cg we will directly calculate the moment of inertia so find cg when ixx and iyy has been asked don't find cg when any other axis has been asked okay so must remember this two fundamentals now let us discuss moment of inertia about centroidal axis so you can see now what is given in the figure the same figure we will first of all find ixx for part 1 as per parallel axis theorem ixx means this is the ixx centroidal axis about about this axis we are going to find moment of inertia now what is ig ig means moment of inertia about this axis for part 1 means centroidal axis of part 1 then h will be distance between those this two axis as shown in figure distance between this two axis which two axis about centroidal axis xx and about centroidal axis of part 1 so distance between this two axis is known as h a means area of part 1 so let us start now what is the formula of ig it is bd cube by 12 when it is ixx it is bd cube by 12 when it is iyy it is db cube by 12 you can see in the formula so b means width 60 d means depth 20 so 60 into 20 cube by 12 now what is area of the rectangle 1200 as you can see in the calculation of cg now must remember what is h bar you can directly see from the figure this is totally 20 so this vertical distance is 10 plus 
this distance we have to calculate now y bar is equal to 50 so this centroidal axis will be at a distance of 50 this distance is 50 and total is 60 see in the figure total is 60 so this is 10 so answer will be 10 10 this 10 huh? remember this this is 10 and this is also 10 so total 20 but by this drawing or by this calculation the figure will become very tedious so we have calculated we have calculated the shortcut method now h is equal to y1 minus y by 4 part 1 and h is equal to y bar minus y2 4 part 2 you will get the same answer so what is y1 minus y bar that you can calculate from the table y1 is 70 means distance of cg of part 1 from the bottom axis and y bar is equal to 50 as calculated earlier so this is h 70 minus 50 whole square by simplifying in your calculator 5.20 into 10 raised to 5 is the answer of moment of inertia. Unit will be mm raised to 4. Now for the second part, i x x equal to i g plus a square. Now for the second part, what horizontal width means b means 20, d means 60. So 20 into 60 cube by 12. Area same 1200. H bar is equal to y bar minus y2, which you can find from the table. So 50 minus 30 whole square. Answer will be this. Now, these are the separate formula for Ixx and Ixx, Ixx1 and Ixx2. But we have to calculate Ixx for the entire section. So, Ixx for the entire section will be Ixx1 plus Ixx2. So, adding these two values, you will get Ixx is equal to 13.6 into 10 raised to 5 mm raised to 4. So, this is the method to calculate Ixx. Remember this thing, in Ixx, we are using y bar minus y2, y1 minus y bar etc. because it is x x axis. So it is vice versa. When you will find i y y, then here it is x1 minus x bar, x2 minus x bar. Okay. Let us see how we can calculate i y y now. So in the same figure, this is the calculation of i y y now. You can see from the figure i y y1 and i y y2 we will calculate separately with the help of parallel axis theorem while calculating i y y what is i g so formula will interchange the value it will be db cube by 12 okay so what is db cube by 12 this is db cube by 12 you can see in the part 1 depth is 20 and b is 60 so db cube by 12 means 20 into 60 cube by 12 area will be 1200 and h will be 0. h will be 0. How h will be 0? Because the figure is symmetrical about y axis, you can see x bar is equal to 30 at this distance and x1 is also at the same distance. So x1 and x are both are same. So if you find h by means of x1 minus x bar, then it is 30 minus 30 will become 0. In short, forget this thing, just remember shortcut that when the figure is symmetrical, symmetrical about y axis, then h is always 0 for all the parts. Again repeating, when the figure is symmetrical about y axis, then h will be 0 for all the parts. So, for the part 2, it is 60 into 20 cube by 12 plus 1200 into 0. For part 2, depth is 60 and width is 20. So, by calculating, first value will be 3.6 10 raised to 5 and second value will be 0.40 10 raised to 5 mm raised to we are wanting to calculate i y y for the entire section. So i y y for the entire section will be summation of i y y 1 and i y y 2 means addition of moment of inertia of part 1 and part 2. So by adding part 1 answer and part 2 answer you will get total i y y of the section. So basically this is the method of calculating moment of inertia about centroidal axis x x and y y. But what? If the moment of inertia is asked about any other axis, let us see in the next example. In this example, you can see we have to find IAB for the section showing figure. Where is IAB? Actually, AB is this axis given to you. Means AB, the axis which is already given in the figure, then you have to calculate IAB directly. Means you don't have to find CG itself. Do not find X bar and Y bar just directly go to the formula now here we are using shortcut formulas one formula for the semicircle 
there is no theory for the semicircle in our syllabus but you just remember the formula of the semicircle directly let us see how first of all moment of inertia of a triangle now must listen to me my words each and every words this axis ab about which we have to find moment of inertia is also the base of the triangle is also the centroidal axis of the circle is also the base of semicircle 2 okay it is also the base of this semicircle means this is the base of semicircle you can say diameter so when these things are happening these things means what when the given axis ab is base of the triangle centered of the circle base of the semicircle then we will use direct formulas we will not use parallel axis theorem in this case so we will use direct formula about the basis so according to formula about base triangles moment of inertia will be bh cube by 12 where b means base of the triangle this which is equal to 40 plus 40 80 and h means height of this triangle which is also 80 so 80 into 80 cube by 12 so answer will be 3.41 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 now moment of inertia of this semicircle will be equal to pi by 128 d raised to 4 remember that formula for the circle is pi by 64 d raised to 4 so for the semicircle formula will be half of the circle this what is half of the pi by 64 remember what is half of the pi by 64 it is not pi by 32 it is actually pi by 128 okay 64 into 2 pi by 128 so pi by 128 d raised to 4 where d means diameter of the semicircle which is again 80 now so pi by 128 into 80 raised to 4 you will get 1.01 into 10 raised to 6 for the part 3 means circle diameter is 40 so pi by 64 d raised to 4 is the formula where d equal to 40 you will get the answer 0 0.125 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. So, moment of inertia will be IAB equal to this. Now, this means what? Part 1 plus part 2 minus part 3. Remember, the circle, see in the figure, the circle is cut out from the section. The section is composed of triangle, then semicircle at the bottom. And from this two combination, circle will be cut out from the section. So, circle will be negative. So, by replacing all the values, you will get the answer of IAB 4.295 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. Remember this thing in the moment of inertia, you have to do the practice. You have to do practice very well in the calculator. So, this is the tough calculation in the Kelsey. So, these are the basic two methods of calculating moment of inertia first one is moment of inertia about centroidal axis and in the second sum moment of inertia about any other axis which is not given to you but it is always shown in the figure okay so both the methods are different to find moment of inertia so we will conclude the topic over here so this is this is the syllabus of your mid sem exam so thank you very much go through all the videos practice yourself from lecture number one to lecture number 32 and ask for any doubts thank you and best of luck students